All right, I'm here today. I'm going to do a unboxing slash mini review on the TYT MD 680 digital two-way radio. And the model that I purchased is the VHF model. And there's not a whole lot of information out there about this, except on the manufacturer's website. So I'm gonna take a look at the radio, see how it compares to some of the other radios, and uh, see if it's worth purchasing. All right. So the first step, take it out of here. And it comes in a box that's just like all the other TYT radios come in. For example, here is an MD390 that I also just received. So here is MD390. So we'll be able to do a little comparison. And the reason I bought the MD680 is it shares the same battery uh, and accessories as the MD390. It is different than the MD380, however, because the MD390 has a larger battery, it's waterproof, so we'll look at that more here in a few minutes. So if you look at the specifications, the transmitter is a 10 watt on high, so it's supposed to output 10 watts of power, and on low, 4 watts. It says 4 FSK digital, the vocoder type AMBE plus 2 TM. And I guess if we want, we can compare the specifications with the specs on here. So this one, the MD390, says the high output power is 5 watts, low 1 watt. So we're talking about double the power output. Uh, let's see. For FSK digital mode, um, 7K 60 FXD data only, and 12.5 kilohertz data and voice, 7K 60 FXD. So everything looks the same on here. Digital protocol. Everything's the same. Vocoder type is the same. Um, as far as our sensitivity goes, everything is the same. Audio power is one watt on the speaker on both of these. Um, the MD680 only has 16 channels, but they both have the same frequency range, whereas the MD390 has 1,000 channels in theory. I picked up the MD390 for $124.99 with free shipping on eBay. And that seems to be about the best deal you can find on an MD390. Uh, the MD680 I picked up on eBay for, I think it was $79, and that included free shipping. And that was from a US seller in Kansas, which is a little bit harder to find, especially the VHF version. So open up the box, you've got your user manual, a little authenticity tag there, and we have the video itself, okay, so if you look, it is the same size, basic form factor as the 390. The buttons are all in the same spot. Look at the sides, all that's the same. The back's the same, the battery housing is the same. The way the walkie clip bolts on is to the frame, just like the 390, which makes it different than the 380. Your button arrangement on the side, everything's the same, except obviously not having the screen and the button pad. Okay, so I guess the question is why would you buy something like this? Well, in my application, I'm not using this for necessarily amateur radio repeater use. So I do not need the necessarily the functionality of this one here. I'm using these radios for simplex point-to-point -point communication. And one of the things I'm going to try to find out in this video is whether or not this radio supports the two time slots, time slot one and time slot two, because 
from the, all the information that I've found so far, it only supports one time slot, which in my case, once again, since I'm not going to be using it on uh, any repeaters, that doesn't matter, but it is something you may want to consider. So we'll try to look at that. Um, I do believe it only works on one time slot though. But I want to make sure that these radios can talk to each other and work together as well. So I'll set the 390 aside for a minute. Get this out of here. Get your regular shorter VHF antenna, just like 390. Our battery. That is a 7.4 volt 2200 milliamp battery. This uses a actual voice recording to tell you what channel you're on. Five, three, one, two. It's nice that it's in English. One. Okay. Got a US power adapter. Obviously our charger and that is all that's in the box all right so got the radios sit next to each other so once again they are almost identical oh, they are identical in size the button arrangement is the same there's not a whole lot more really to go over without getting into the software itself so I'm going to do a little digging into the software and then we'll find out if these radios are actually compatible and can talk to each other. But when you turn this one on, it goes to a startup tone and then gives you your channel. What? All right, and then the MD390. And there you go. Uh, it's well established that the MD390 is an excellent radio. And you know, for the price of an MD380 being the same price as this, it's probably why this radio isn't very popular. I mean, why would you even consider buying this? But like I said, it's simple. You can hand it to someone. You can tell them, just leave it on channel one, don't mess with it. Or if you need this, go to channel two. And it's simple. You don't have to worry about someone messing with settings, screwing something up. All you can do is talk back and forth on it. So. In that case, it's just an excellent walkie-talkie. It's waterproof, and it's rugged. I mean, this thing feels very, very solid in the hand. So I will try to get a little bit of programming into these, and be back in a minute. Okay, so I got a quick program into each of these radios. Um, should note that the MD390 comes with a programming cable and it is a USB programming cable um, it on Windows XP on my machine here it installed itself after I had the MD390 CPS software installed which is the programming software um, and then it's got the Kenwood style connector on the other end which plugs into the side of the radio um, should note that the MD680 will not work with that same programming cable even though it's got the same connector and the radio looks like it uses a Baofeng style connector which is actually it's the same connector but it's a serial port connection or a it could be a USB cable but it would be the uh, USB to serial you know the prolific driver so basically your programming cable for your MD380 or MD390 will not work on the MD680 so I had another cable that works with my uh, Baofeng like UV5R 
uh, my Watson radio, etc. All the other radios. It plugs right in and it works on uh, the correct COM port. All right, so real quick, I'm not going to go through this in great detail, but I wanted to give you my verdict on the the MD680. This is the programming software. Once again, it uses its own software for the, just this radio. And it's very, very basic. You have your um, basic information. It says the serial number, the version date, and the firmware version, which those are all grayed out. And they don't even actually say anything. You have your settings where you can change your uh, ID. And I just put in, you know, a random ID for testing purposes. but. Um, that's where you would put your DMR ID. There's just some basic settings that you set up, you know, for some, for some Vox settings, such like that. Uh, you have your programmable buttons on the side of the radio, your two programmable buttons that can be changed here. You have your zone settings. Zones. Um, you're able to set up your frequencies. And, for example, If you scroll over and click the more tab, let's put a, we'll just put a frequency in there. There's a holder here. Click more. You would put in your channel alias, your color code, and it's got the same color code, 0 through, through uh, 15. Your slot. This is where the MD680 kind of... Um, proves itself it's not com it is definitely not compatible with your uh, repeater use you know, in the United States for amateur use so it's got slot 0 and slot 1 slot 1 is equal to slot 1 on the MD390 MD380 but there is no slot 2 as you can see so the MD680 definitely 100% confirmed which I already pretty much knew that it cannot be used on a repeater in that fashion. Um, for those of you who have some way to use encryption, which I don't know what that be, maybe it's private business or government use or whatever, um, that's another downfall of this radio. It does have encryption, but we'll go over here to the encryption area. Your encryption key is either normal or enhanced mode zero or enhanced mode one, whatever you want to call it. The problem is this is not compatible with your encryption in a MD390 radio. So look something like this. This would be like a basic value. You have your enhanced values. Uh, long story short, they are not compatible whatsoever in any shape or form. Um, you'll get a little bit of noise on the receiving radio, but I can confirm that the encryption is not compatible between the 680 and the 390. So, uh, I can tell you that you can transmit uh, between radios. Uh, obviously, if you're not using encryption, you're just using simplex DMR. These radios will communicate with each other in digital format and it does work just fine. I've noticed that the microphone on the 680 um, sounds a little, it sounds, the output is a little more like of a tinny sound, a hollow sound than the output from the 390. Um, so I'm not sure if that's just this unit or just a problem with all of them. Um, I guess I would say that um, I probably would not recommend the MD680. I guess I can see why it's not a very popular radio. Um, just because there are other options, I guess. But if you just had a pile of 680s, you wanted a cheap, digital, simplex radio, um, you could use the encryption on these if you were just using multiple 680s, uh, etc. You know, they would work well for that purpose and for $79 a piece you'd be hard pressed to find another radio that is as rugged has good battery life etc and it's simple to use but a lot of people would make like I said the argument just buy an MD380 
for the same price and use that. So I guess it depends on what your use is. Um, for most of us, an MD380 or MD390 is probably going to be your better deal. You're getting way, 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 way more features and compatibility. And we all know it's a tested platform for the money. Okay, so hopefully this was somewhat informational for those of you who possibly were trying to find out some information on the MD680. Like I said, there's not very much information out there on it. So I just wanted to put a little something together uh, with my findings. And leave a comment below, like and subscribe if you want more. Thanks.